the 1950s, a group of researchers led by Leon Festinger infiltrated a cult that believed that the world was going to end due to an impending flood before the dawn of December 21, 1954. The cult's leader, Dorothy Martin, revealed a prophecy via the process of automatic writing, a psychic way of writing words without conscious effort. Supposedly, what you write comes from some sort of supernatural force, like a ghost communicating through you to the real world. The believers in the cult thought that if they gave up all of their worldly belongings, quit their jobs, and cut themselves off from their families, and dedicated themselves to praying for salvation, they would be rescued by aliens from the fictional planet Clarion. These aliens were waiting nearby to Earth in their flying saucers. As the prophesied hour for rescue from the flood passed with no sign of a flying saucer, Festinger noted that there was a lot of concern in the group. They could not explain what was happening. At about 4.05 a.m. in the morning of December 21, the cult leader received another message by automatic writing. The message said that Earth was going to be spared from the destructive flood because it had been saved by the prayers of the cult members who had spread light across the world. Festinger noticed a very interesting change in the cult members' behaviour the next day. Previously, the cult members had avoided any publicity and did not want to speak to outsiders. After the prophecy failed, however, the group contacted the media and began a campaign to spread the news that it had saved the world. Festinger was interested in the role that cognitive inconsistency might play in creating this change in behaviour. He proposed a theory of attitude behaviour relations called cognitive dissonance theory. Now, when Leon Festinger proposed dissonance theory in 1957, people thought that we would tend to have more positive attitudes to things that are associated with positive outcomes or rewards. This was the behaviourist perspective based on reinforcement theory proposed by Skinner in 1938. Festinger thought that under some circumstances, precisely the opposite would be true. A person would have a more positive attitude towards something when receiving a small reward compared to a large reward. This prediction caused quite a stir at the time as it was rather counterintuitive. He thought that this would be the case because one of our fundamental drives or motivations is to maintain cognitive consistency. Any inconsistency in our thoughts or cognitions, what Festinger called dissonance, was not pleasant and so we're motivated to reduce it. He thought that dissonance reduction could be achieved by changing one of the cognitions, generating new cognitions that restore consonants, or by minimising the importance of one or more of the cognitions that are inconsistent. The precise method we use for dissonance reduction depends on the constraints of reality. For example, in the case of an inconsistency between someone's attitude and behaviour, the most readily changeable cognition is the attitude, especially if somebody else saw the person behaving in the way that they did. The reality is that once behaviour has been performed in front of another person, it's difficult to deny that you behaved in that way. And so the attitude is the cognition most open to change. At the core of Festinger's theory was the idea that cognitive consistency rather than reinforcement was the important determinant of behaviour.